North Korean two-step. Sanction enforcement followed by sanction avoidance. The North Korean regime, never one to be shy from seeking attention, was once again in the headlines last week. Much in the typical North Korean style of being a pariah nation, the reasons for the headlines did not provide much hope for calming the tensions on the Korean Peninsula or the Asia-Pacific region. On March 26, 2024, the United States and South Korea held an inaugural meeting of a task force with the objective to cut off access to resources that North Korea could use to continue development of their nuclear and missile programs. On March 28, 2024, Russia effectively ended the monitoring of sanctions compliance put into place over North Korea's nuclear missile programs when it vetoed the annual renewal of sanction monitoring in the United Nations Security Council. The result of these two steps, which is basically counteract each other, further arose cooperation in ending North Korean nuclear programs or curbing prol proliferation. The U.S. and South Korea created the Enhanced Disruption Task Force, or EDTF, and held its first meeting in Washington, D.C. on March 26th. The purpose of the task force is to close the gaps that North Korea has been exploiting to bypass international sanctions over its nuclear weapons and missile programs. The urgencies of creating this new task force is due to North Korean leader Kim Jong-un stepping up not only his rhetoric, but also actions over his dispute with South Korea, which has escalated to canceling any attempts of reconciliation or reunification. This includes the call by Kim Jong-un to ramp up the production of nuclear warheads and for sharp increases in missile tests, many of which are assumed to be able to be fitted with nuclear warheads in the future. The primary focus of the EDTF will be to punish the North Korean economy with purpose of forcing the North Korean government to allocate resources outside of the weapons production and starve the ability of the North Korean military to function effectively. The primary focus will be restricting the flow of petroleum and refined, refined petroleum products. The past force will identify companies and individuals who assist the North Koreans to circumvent sanctions and sanction those entities or individuals. The Russians, acting in a manner that is nearly opposite of the EDTF, veto a United, State, United Nations Security Council re resolution to renew the UN panel that has been assigned to monitor North Korea's efforts to circumvent international sanctions on their missile and nuclear weapons programs. The panel reports its findings to the Security Council and required its operating authority to be renewed every year. Russia vetoed the renewal, and that, in effect, canceled the monitoring program. The vote was 13 for 4 and one veto and one abstention. The abstention was from China, who typically sides with Russia on Security Council, but did not need to vote on, with Russia's veto, so it could look like the reasonable, unreasonable country. The Russians stated that the monitoring program was now counterproductive and was a hindrance to seeking peace and dialogue on the Korean Peninsula. The Russian Foreign Ministry added that despite the sanctions and monitoring, the security situation in the region has not improved. Russia in the past supported this panel and was a country that was generally a strong advocate for nuclear nonproliferation. But once again, the events of the events of and following the Ukraine-Russian war has changed another part of the international order. The war has created additional sanctions against Russia, though not from the United Nations where Russia could veto it. One of the significant sanctions is one that, that limits the sale of transportation of Russian oil. Russia needs oil sales to support its economy and Western countries have stopped or significantly curtailed their purchases of Russian oil. Russia has sought other customers to purchase the sanctioned oil. One of the customers is North Korea, which can now buy Russian oil at a discount offered by the Russians, and this is happening despite UN sanctions. The other factor is that Russia needs arms in its war in Ukraine to cover its expenditures while its economy moves to a wartime production footing. The result is that Russia entered into an agreement to buy North Korean produced artillery shells and missiles to use in Ukraine. South Korea and the U.S. claim that over 10,000 containers were shipped from North Korea to Russia. It is unclear what North Korea received from the agreement, but the newly canceled U.N. sanction group did provide proof that North Korea having an infusion of oil and other products that point towards Russia helping North Korea to break U.N. sanctions.
The North Koreans, since the Russian agreement, have successfully launched a spy satellite into orbit and has introduced a new solid rocket-fueled intermediate-range missile. Solid rocket-fueled weapons allow for much quicker launches and lesser maintenance when compared to the liquid-fueled rockets. It is also building a new annex for, for its uranium processing facility that processes uranium for its nuclear weapons. This is all in addition to a stepped-up frequency of North Korean missile launches. It is unclear whether Russia is providing North Korea the technical assistance, but since entering the weapons agreement with Russia, there has been some disturbing progress in North Korean sanctioned activities. All of these events are taking place at the same time North Korea has stepped up its rhetoric to destroy South Korea and the United States. These threats are nothing new, but the concern for defense officials is that North Korea has been traditionally relying on its vast inventory of artillery and artillery ammunition to carry out its doctrine, which included an ability to fire over 1 million artillery shells into Seoul to turn it into, quote, a sea of fire, end quote. Now, the North Koreans are shipping large stores of artillery ammunition to Russia. It has also changed its policy by renouncing a doctrine of no first use of nuclear weapons in a conflict. This calls to increase production of nuclear weapons and development of a solid rocket engines mean that North Korea will have more nuclear weapons and a solid rocket delivery system capable of a first strike with very little early warning. Is the North Korean shifting its defense posture from being reliant on artillery as its primary arm to nuclear armed missiles with an ability to strike first? The arms agreement with Russia and the ending of the UN Mon weapons monitoring program means Russia can more yet readily assist in helping North Korea find customers for its rocket technology as well as, as well and the Ukraine war will provide the cover. North Korean weapons can be moved overland to Russia where it will not be interdicted by countries trying to enforce UN sanctions. Russia can then purchase the missiles or facilitate the sale to other customers and countries seeking missile technology such as Iran or Pakistan. Both options will provide North Korea with sanction relief at a very, at, and at the very least to help it continue fund its military expenditures. The Russian decision to veto the UN monitors will make the work of the EDTF much more difficult, if not negate its effectiveness altogether. Sanctions have done little to deter Russia and that with China also aligned with Russia, it, is, it will be assumed that both with the help of North Korea to circumvent sanctions and it is doubtful that the EDTF sanctions of companies and individuals can make up the difference when North Korea has had two powerful countries, China and Russia, assisting it in breaking sanctions. The EDTF may have been checkmated after its first meeting. If you like my content and you want to support my work, please consider becoming a Substack subscriber to Pegasus Research or considering become a supporter through my Patreon at patreon.com slash Pegasus Research.